Aww, Geek, Geek Out! Hey, and welcome to another Geek Out commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. Uh, I'm Josh. And we're continuing our countdown to Star Trek Beyond. I think this is the last commentary that comes out before Star Trek Beyond. And the last commentary I'm excited for. Zay! Actually, I think that's true. That, yeah. <laughs> the, I, or at I least the last it. Star Trek commentary. Sure, yeah. Commentary. Yeah. Um, yeah, 50 years of Star Trek. We're continuing our little Star Trek commentary marathon with Star Trek First Contact. It came out in 1996, so it means this movie's 20 years old now. Oof. Also means that it was a good year for Brent Spiner because Independence Day came out in 1996. And Which course, also got a sequel. Oh, sorry. You were probably it about also to say got that, a weren't you? Yeah, yeah. But, but no, I mean, like it's... It, yeah, so I guess this year's a good year for Brent Spiner, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what else has he done in the last 20 years? Well, I guess he had two Star Trek movie sequels. Yeah, and he had that web series Fresh Hell, and yeah, he shows up on, I forget what TV show. It doesn't fucking matter. No. Mm. So this is, this yeah. matters. Yeah. What do you guys think of First Contact? No uh, idea. This, as I mentioned last commentary, is currently ranked favorite Generations movie, uh, and up there probably with top three of all Star Trek movies. I agree, yeah, completely. Yeah. It is. I, you agree that I think that? <laughs> well, yes, that as well. No, I think this is easily for me. This is easily the best next generation cast film. So it's also the first one directed by Jonathan Frakes. It's his feature directorial debut. He basically got the job because John McTurnan of Die Hard fame and uh, Ridley Scott turned it down. Um, and they were that like, would have been interesting a Ridley Scott, a Ridley Scott Star Trek film, yeah. yeah. Especially mm-hmm. if it was just like the same, more or less the same movie, yeah. You know, like with the Borg and everything. Ooh. Sure, yeah. But yeah, no, Frakes got the job after that, me. and uh, yeah, this is this is what we got. But yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right, so we are watching the Blu-ray version of this movie. You should be good with whatever you have because there's no special editions or anything like that. We have the movie queued up and ready to go. All zeros on the counter. So make sure you have that good to go, and I will tell you to hit play in five, four, three, two, one, play. Yeah, the uh, the Borg were kind of not used much, and like they were introduced obviously in the end of Next Gen, at the end of season three when they kidnap Captain Picard. Um, and turn him into a Borg, which is a plot point that features heavily here. But they hadn't really been... They don't show up at all in Deep Space Nine. They were used very sparingly in Next Generation. And whenever they do show up, it was like all hands on deck. It was like a fucking huge level threat. And so they're like, we should do something Borg-related. Yeah, it was It was a good... It was a smart move on their part to keep the Borg as like a serious villain. Like, you know, it wasn't... You know, as opposed like, to like Voyager, where they show yeah. up too much. Yeah. Mm. Not that I've seen Voyager, but I've heard stories. <laughs> there's kind of a... Because at this point, uh, Star Trek Voyager is, is well underway. There's a line that the showrunners had the uh, screenwriters add where they're like, oh, the Borg are stuck in the Delta... are isolated to the Delta Quadrant, which is where Voyager takes place. That was kind of a nice little bit of foreshadowing they requested to be installed in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the studio's idea to do a, another time travel story because of how well-received Voyage Home was. And meanwhile, the screenwriters of their own volition wanted to use the Borg, and they're like, well, let's just combine the ideas. Boom. A, a time travel story with the Borg. I'll take the Borg over whales any day. <laughs> I mean, yes, me too. <laughs> Although, technically, whale's not villain of that movie. Yeah. Uh... It's the MacGuffin of that film. <laughs> their absence is the villain. <laughs> God, they're still the villain to me. Okay. I think this is the last movie Jerry Goldsmith scores in Star trek them. It just goes downhill after that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wonder how much of his absence was the cause of that. Yeah. 80%? Well, you know, and Jonathan Frakes films in Zerection, you know, that he he does, he directs the, the sequel to this, but there's something that just goes wrong with that one, whereas this one's just, it's awesome. It's, Ooh, Herman Zimmerman. Yeah. <laughs> I think the cool thing about, uh, you know, the Borg is they're basically robot zombies in space. <laughs> <laughs> and Three of, like, my favorite things. Yeah, and I think um, they, you know, as a feature film, they could go a little more graphic with the Borg, whereas, like, in the show, it was just like, oh, if, you bore, if you're assimilated, you just become pale and basically wear a metal suit. <laughs> whereas in this one, they're like, oh, no, you basically get, like, fucking Frankenstein. Mm. And then when they show the Borg Queen 
um yeah that yeah. that no no one no one saw it because it's an audio podcast but uh josh just had like a tremor down his spine and yeah yeah it's the best part quite literally with spine although i love tremor. how all of them have the spencer's gift uh you know lightning <laughs> disc above their heads Previously in the Matrix films. I mean, it's not far off. <laughs> yeah, Matrix comes out, what, the following year? This kind of looks Ridley Scott-esque, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Ridley Scott would have been great for this. <laughs> the cutest of Borg O-face. Yeah. Lacutus being the Latin word for voice because he, or speak, because he was the spokesperson for the Borg when he was first assimilated. Hey, it's Dead Space 2. <laughs> Hello? He heard you say that. Yeah. <laughs> good game, Picard. Get on it. That's what the holodeck's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is very much like Picard dealing with his PTSD. From like season three, season four. Whereas the last movie was Picard dealing with the loss of his um, family. Family, yeah. Also, note the different uniforms. Yeah, which I like these uniforms. Yeah, it's kind of like how the the movies like evolved the uh, the original series uniforms too. Yeah, they had wanted to do it um, for generations, but. They didn't have the, the time to redesign the look, especially since it was in principal photography at the same time as Next Gen. But yeah, new Enterprise, because remember the last one, this is Enterprise E. So they got to rebuild all the sets, make it a little more militaristic and better to fit the aspect ratio. I like, I like this uh, Enterprise. I'm mm-hmm. a big fan. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling you guys will stop them. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because there's like four more movies? Mm-hmm. I guess just two this more. Motherfucker. This motherfucker. <laughs> and look, there's Jordy without his visor. Yeah. I'm going to take away my favorite thing, next gen. They were like, the, the Klingons used it against us in the last movie. <laughs> Originally... The original script was Riker leads the Enterprise team against the Borg on the ship, and Picard leads the Earth team. And before Frakes had signed on to direct, they were like, no, Picard's got the personal history with the Borg. He should fight the Borg. And Frakes thought that was a, like, again, he came on after that change was made. He was like, it made made it easier for me to direct. <laughs> like, he's yeah. got the low-intensity <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's like Nimoy directing three. Yeah. <laughs> Easy gig, guaranteed paycheck. Yeah, sure, I'll direct it. I get a double dip on this. I get a director's paycheck and an actor's paycheck. Sweet. (laughs) Gonna give myself all the lines. Evening is with Patrick Stewart. (laughs) (laughs) I'd watch that Broadway show. I think him and uh, McKellen are bringing back Waiting for Gatto uh, at the end of the summer. Don't tell I, him so excited. He directed about himself it. Th- to saying it that badly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he enjoyed every minute of it. I um I forget, but uh is this the movie or is it one of the next movies where Frakes shaves and he's like That's insurrection. Okay. He's like <laughs> look, data smooth as an android's bottom <laughs> and then like a minute like an an, an obscenely long time later, Data like rubs his face and he's like, "No!" And like, <laughs> I remember seeing that movie in the theater. I'll probably bring it up in, the, in in that commentary as well. But like, I remember seeing the movie in the theater and just being like, "Huh? Oh, uh, the joke could be could have been funnier if you timed it better." Still doesn't save that movie. True. 
Have they set a date for the wedding yet? Oh, they must have with that look they each gave. The enti- Hey, look, it's Neil McDonough, Dum Dum Dugan as the uh, navigator. Oh, yeah. Who? Let's uh, take bets on if his console he kills plays, him. He plays M. Bison in the second Street Fighter film. He's also uh, in Band of Brothers. Yes. Mm. Kills that one Nazi by throwing basically a fastball grenade to the back of his head. But the uh, Starfleet, if you, the Starfleet fleet was destroyed in the season four premiere by the Borg, and that was the last major engagement between the Borg and, and Starfleet, and this is, it goes just about as well here. Do we ever find out where the Borg were from? I I can't seem to recall. The Delta Quadrant. But I mean, like like a massive backstory on them? Um, It kind of gets explored in Voyager. I don't know if we ne- necessarily know where the collective begins, but we just know that they're from the Delta Quadrant. Okay, so but no like two-part episode dedicated to them? <sighs> I mean, there's multi-part episodes in Voyager dedicated to them. <laughs> oh, okay. You'll never speak for me, Data. Ah, fine. <laughs> I'm just still have a bad taste in my mouth from the, 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 the last movie with him. <laughs> it's yeah. right. And I know it's not necessarily <laughs> his <laughs> fault. Like they're like, "Hey, you have to act like this." Yeah. He didn't sing it. But um, <laughs> he's just terrible. Data's always just like, <laughs> just <laughs> always <laughs> been weird. I've never been a big Data fan. <clears throat> that is one massive paperweight. But it's an easy uh, um, Rubik's Cube. Mm. It's all one color. That's the Defiant, which is the ship from Deep Space Nine. Because at this point, Michael Dorn, you know, Worf is part of the Deep Space Nine cast. And so they had to come up with a way to get him to rejoin the Enterprise for the film. And it's like, well, he would, of course, be part of the battle to save Earth. That's Adam Scott. I was about to say, say, is that Adam Scott? (laughs) Yep. Well, that's funny, though. Hard. Originally, there was scenes. He's with, like the yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, originally there were scenes with. Uh, yeah, there were scenes with Cisco beep, beep. in the um, like he had cool film scene. scenes for the for the film, but they got cut. And originally, the Defiant was supposed to be destroyed, but the showrunners for Deep Space Nine are like, we still need the ship. (laughs) And they were like, okay. The thing looks like a power grid. Good, now that that ship's gone. You may fire when ready. <laughs> this is the first time there's been like more than like three ships on a screen at once, I feel like, in anything Star Trek movie. Uh, in a movie, yeah. It is nice seeing them all fire together, too. Yeah. yeah. On his command. A nice coordinated attack. The probe. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the giant sphere. cube has a giant sphere. Oh, God. They've learned shapes. It's our greatest fear. I'm true. Jesus. Jesus, Mother Mary. Well, it's a Borg ball. Better go home. Engage. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, kind of, point. <laughs> what? I don't know. Did you not notice the giant fucking sphere? <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake! What's up, motherfucker? <laughs> I was wondering where he was like earlier on in the movie. I was like, he's like cool. I feel like that sash is just a little too big for him. What's the point of that sash? Like, is it him to be like, I'm just the man? I think it's part of his Klingon stuff. Yeah, school. it's um, it. I remember asking someone a while ago, and it's representative of something of his Klingon 
uh, rank or whatever. He's like the only Klingon that looks cool. <laughs> you didn't think that Christopher Lloyd looked cool? <laughs> Define your definition of cool. What about like, <laughs> shitty looking? What about Christopher Plummer in Undiscovered Country? Oh, General for Chang. fuck's sake, yeah. <laughs> Make me the least looking Klingon. <laughs> oh. Bye. So, that's so apparently the probe was going 88 miles an hour. I was about to say, that's what 88 looks like in space. The final frontier. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I like the uniforms, but I also wish they weren't all gray. You know what I mean? I like that they have, like, the shirt underneath. But I wish that like the gray was their color. They they found the one they they had been looking to change the uniforms for a while, um, because mm-hmm. they found the unitards to be kind of just like so physically restricting. Yeah, and silly looking. Yeah. We have to go back. Like, could you speak a little louder, sir? <laughs> yeah. No, you have to do it. Bye. Meanwhile, yeah, in the past, <laughs> yeah. which is still our future. This is also the first Star Trek movie we were watching so, without right? Captain Kirk. Yeah, yeah. This mm. is without any member of the original crew. Yeah. Um, but we still get campy. Yeah. Well, this takes place like so. The unexplored. They they're like what originally when they were coming up with the time travel story, the studio suggested the Renaissance, and it would have been called Star Trek Renaissance, and it would have been mm-hmm. like, like Data would have teamed up with Leonardo da Vinci and uh, and DiCaprio, and the if only. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> and they all would have become a flying machine. Yeah, hey. they basically would have fought the Borg. That'll do, pig. Yeah, there's, there's James Cromwell, but the uh, the studio was like, that's gonna be too campy. Or no, the writers were like, that'd be too campy. And so they were like, let's show the origin of Starfleet. Yes, she's in Civil War. She's the one that accuses Tony Stark outside the elevator. Leonardo DiCaprio? (laughs) That's the (laughs) Constellation Enterprise. Well, it's actually the Constellation Borg Sphere, but yes. Mm, Even worse. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, the idea was, you know, he, Earth is still recovering from World War Three, which we had heard about but never really seen. And I guess we still don't, but but we see them like kind of in these makeshift camps trying to survive and develop space flight. Mm. Again? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't James Cromwell kind of look like if you stretch James Cameron out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Both named James. Stunts. Yeah. Goodbye, James. Yeah. Cromwell. Although I know that wasn't him, but I'm assuming he's in the movie longer well, than like you know, five seconds. If you got, like, Jake, well. I've never seen the two stand next to each other, so yeah, yeah that's true. Wow, a console still hasn't taken him out yet. Consoles. Yet, yeah, the consoles aren't the issue here <laughs> in this one. I, they still could blow up. It's still an Enterprise. <laughs> Pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most like non threatening invasion force I've ever seen. <laughs> First time we see quantum torpedoes. Previously they had been photon torpedoes. Are they of solace? Damn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are there sort of a mini James Bond in each one of them? Yes, yes. Mm. Daniel Craig. That's why they're so powerful. <laughs> Why don't you fucking say anything, Mr. Sideboard Man? Nothing? <laughs> Just like sitting there like hitting a car. So Good. just under 50 years from now. It's not Independence Day. Yeah. Is that from Conkren, as we find out in the original series, was the first president of Starfleet and the inventor of warp drive. That's what the Borger back in 2063 to stop his first successful test flight of warp drive. So he invents it and then becomes self-named president. Um, or is I think he voted. He's in? voted in because he also. Well, you'll you'll see by the end because he does more than just more than just develop uh, warp warp speed with a little help from his friends. Well, the friends come later. <laughs> I 
At least knock. Oh, it's like green room Picard. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the coat. But not the beard. <laughs> or the the fascism. Mm. <laughs> They're almost like time cops in this movie. So that means they're all Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, a real gun. She's in Luke Cage too, but they haven't really, they haven't, I mean obviously at the time we're recording this and the time this thing airs, we haven't... (laughs) <laughs> Wait, the same actress who's in Civil War is also in Luke Cage? Yeah, because they uh, Marvel Studios and Marvel Television doesn't play nice. So oh. they were like, oh, you were already cast in Luke Cage? Well, we've already, you're already in Civil War. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Look at that realness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The realness of Data, who I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't know. You might like him in this movie. So they haven't... Not now, but... <laughs> yeah. I mean, but his his dealings with the Borg... You just got to make up for that last movie, man. That was cool, though. The gun. A hold dog. So I guess phasers come after warp technology. I make, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we NASA says that we pretty much have warp drives now, but we don't have phasers yet, so... We have theoretical warp drive, something that bends space itself rather than propels the ship. Just like the delivery ship in a... The Planetary Express ship in uh, Futurama. Mm. I much prefer that uh, beam up than the uh, the J.J. Abrams universe beam up. Well, the, yeah, that one's weird. It doesn't like depart. Like it almost like whisks you away. Yeah. Also, it can put you anywhere too. Yeah, even if it's you're it. going warp speed. Yeah, he, they yeah they develop trans warp teleportation before it exists. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's foreshadowing because who else likes their ship warm? The Me? Sure, <laughs> sure. If you do, fine. Yes, that that's an accurate I mean, statement. You are, you are <laughs> the yeah. Borg, so... They have to spend at least five minutes circling a ship before it can go anywhere. Yeah, didn't you learn anything from the original series movies? <laughs> from the, yeah, from the motion picture. Well, when you put it that way. Oh. Tell me your secrets. I can feel it kick. <laughs> Whisper sweet nothings to my hand. That's a nice touch. Putting the Smithsonian in this film. Oh, yes. Yes. How's the ship going to respond? <laughs> Has anyone checked inside the ship? No. <laughs> I don't know.
Hello. <laughs> Friend? Captain, there'll be Borgs here. <laughs> I'm assuming. I don't no, know, Scotty's it, not in this one. It sounded no. messy. I'm assuming there's those are Borgs showing up soon, though. Oh, well, yeah. If she looks like a ginger. She'll be the Scots. <laughs> okay, alien. There's definitely more action in this movie, I would say, so far than the previous seven movies. <laughs> and so far, it's all been in space or from orbit. Mm, well, no, there was... Or well, from orbit, sure, but like there was the the whole you know explosions going on on the Earth's surface. Yeah. The Borg. It's Miss Data. <laughs> it's Ms. The Ms. It's the Ms. I've awesome. s- that that is it. That Rocky thing you posted or you tagged me in on Instagram. He's just like, one of them is the greatest athlete of all time. The yeah. other is Rocky Balboa yeah. or whatever. <laughs> What's the Miz doing now? Is he He's still the like... Intercontinental Champion. Oh, he is? Yeah. Do people like the Miz? Mm. <laughs> okay. The... Uh, like, for some reason, I want him to do well because he kind of, you know did the whole like real world thing or whatever and like he's on but he's I mean, he's still kicking i mean he's been around for like over he, a decade. he is he is a great character you know what i'm saying like he's 100 percent committed to it which means people hate him because they're supposed to well if he's the heel the heel is the heel you know but i'm but i but i i believe that you know the 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 smart marks like appreciate the work that he does. Oh yeah, he, I mean, like I said, he wouldn't be around for this long. Like I said, over a decade, right? If if it wasn't for at least a decade, I would think close to. By the way, I I totally know why I know him now. Wasn't he uh, on the Dead Zone TV show? Mm, I don't know. Who the the navigator guy, the one that you keep. Being like, how oh, has he not exploded from his console yet? Or was it Dead Zone? No, it wasn't Dead Zone. It was um, or was it? I'm gonna look it up. The Stephen King show. Yeah. The one that had the Christopher Walken starring movie. Yes. Tried to kill that guy who was going to become president in the future and screw over the planet. I don't know about that. The one where he would touch someone and see their yes, yeah. I uh, I don't remember him. Or he had it. like a TNT show or something like that. I'm looking it up. If you'd watched the uh, most recent season of Arrow, he was um, yeah, yes, um, that that's the guy. He's also Damian in Dark. He's also in Justified. Yes, Isn't he on like Deep Space Nine or something. He uh, he's um. Sam would be taking a dump right now when I need him. <laughs> He's the holographic doctor. Well, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Go on, try to simulate me. Come with me if you want to live. Have you seen those Arnold shirts that he's selling? No. Come with me if you want to lift. <laughs> That's great. Like this no. movie. That's is, a phaser. This movie is like, let's have it just be full on badass action. I like that outfit yeah. a lot, actually. The the vest. Yeah. With like the all red top. Yep. Yeah. This movie is definitely going like Wrath of Khan times like 10 with its action stuff. It's all about the second one, you know? Oh, he was in seven episodes of Suits. Hmm. He gets around. Yeah. 
I'm like, what? That's being generous. Uh, speaking of The Miz, yeah. he's in Marine 3. Of course. Isn't he in like Marine 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9? Uh, the Miz is, yeah, but uh, I didn't see the other ones on uh, this guy's IMDb. Oh, it must be the bad guy. Wait, you're saying the, 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 the Navigator. Oh, you said The Miz. Well, yeah, speaking of The oh, Miz. Oh, okay, I got you, got you. I was like, yeah, I knew The Miz, yeah. Is yeah. In, yeah. Uh, sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, he's in 12 episodes of Justified, my favorite TV show. Yeah, no, I mean, he's great. Mm-hmm. How funny that he is on Arrow because he was the voice of Green Arrow. That's right. In uh, the the DC uh, showcase. Mm -hmm. That was great. At the airport with uh, Black Canary. Yep. And they're like princess. Yeah. Aren't you a pig herder? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, damn. That's right. He was in the movie's timeline. Yeah. Or the rescue crew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the really militaristic one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't think he makes it. I think you're right. Maybe he wasn't in Dead Zone. Who am I thinking of in Dead Zone? Are you trying to think of the lead? Yeah. Oh, that's... um. God, he was in the Breakfast Club. And Anthony in... Michael Hall. That's it. Wow. Yeah, no, looking at his picture, I'm like, how did I confuse the two of them? <laughs> Tequila, ladies and gentlemen, it works miracles. <laughs> you can't criticize anyone when tequila's involved. Oh, Jesus. He was in that terrible Lindsay Lohan movie, I Know Who Killed Me. Oof. I think he's also in 88 Minutes. Yes, he is. Give him a few more shots. Hey, it's the Fonz. Gotta have stupid dancing in a Star Trek movie. (laughs) Still as cool as ever. Why am I directing this? (laughs) (laughs) I can't wait till I see the dailies of this shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Back on Borg to prize. Good name. That's my favorite looking Picard of all time, by the way. Like best, like oh, it's the, that, that outfit fucking the fantastic, man. Mm-hmm. The guns. It's so it's, it's fucking. That should be iconic. That Weird should be like the most iconic thing ever. Scope thing going on here. It's this, the this uh, movie really does make like Patrick Stewart an action star kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's the SNES advantage. <laughs> You mean super scope? Yes, thank you. <laughs> the advantage is just a constant. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to remember the name of it. Veiling horribly. Just think it's a vicious jump, jump first. <laughs> legs, <laughs> Le- oh my god, the legs look so long in those pants. Yeah, well, it's because the black goes all the way up to their chest. Yeah. Damn. We are fucked. <laughs> look at fuck. Look at Patrick Stewart, man. <laughs> look at this beast. I mean, he's, he's a beast. In, he's in better shape now than I am. You know. Oh, just really like fucking seventy six now. <laughs> Till we get to the hollow deck. Well, yeah, we get the. Oh, the, and this is. And it's off. <laughs> and it's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Several years of upgrades. Time travel will do that. Yeah. 
Thank Christ. <laughs> Worf's not my favorite because Jordy has no visor. <laughs> so it's that simple, kids. So as long as he doesn't lose the forehead. Yeah. Although, I don't know, man. Picard, action star <laughs> Picard is like where it's at right now. Century is good sword, man. Everybody fucking in a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same song. <laughs> Looks like just a weird dildo. Speaking of everyone fucking in a UFO. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Are you my mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Just turn around and grab like two of them. They consider us a threat. Yeah. <laughs> Call them names behind their back. <laughs> Patrick Stewart clearly has like bicep shit going on right now. <laughs> yeah. Again, like there's pictures of like Patrick Stewart on vacation at the oh, beach. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, God damn it. Why are you in better I'll shape? I'll follow that beast on Twitter, <laughs> man. I mean, you don't fight the Borg and become a weakling. <laughs> yeah, they say resistance is futile, so you got to be jacked. Yeah. To... Your second most iconic role, you can't even use your legs. God damn it. Your... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> for a second, I thought you were referring to this being that you know second most iconic role. And I was like, but he can use his legs. <laughs> It's X Men that he can't. Oh, <laughs> Dita, Dita. Uh, uh, what the fuck? I call this one my French tickler. <laughs> yes, bitch. Assimilate that. You know, I'm pretty certain that's not how a phaser works. But what the hell? I like that he killed that one before it got out. Yeah. Like, he was like, I'm ready to be born, and just, no, fuck you. I guess I was saying, man, this movie has more action than all seven movies put together so far. No, it's it's great. It really is the most action-packed. Like, this and Nemesis. <laughs> Adapt to this! Well said. Worf is like the Patrick Stewart of Star Trek. I just feel safe when he's around. Worf is the Patrick Stewart of Patrick stuff? Wilson. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Wait for it. <laughs> because Captain Picard is the Patrick Stewart yeah. of Star Trek. <laughs> True. I got in the background. I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh, nut shot, bro. Your nuts are done, son. You got no nuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that was good. Jacked data. <laughs> Don't let them touch you. <laughs> well, then you get touched, bro. Bye. Quick, activate your emotion chip. They'll want to get the fucking rid I mean, of it's you. Kinda, yeah, it's like it's like a, both a zombie film and a, and a, like a monster movie. Like, uh, yeah. What the fuck is that thing? Whoa. Oh, he's what the fuck is that? Like the thing from another world where, you know, that's very clearly like they have to quarantine off sections of the ship. Mm. It's got an alien. Yeah. Aliens vibe for sure. Too. The mercy kill. <laughs> it's like the beginning of serenity <laughs> where like the guy's about to get like reaved and he's just like, yep. Who is played by Glenn Howard. And oh shit. Sunny. He's got his Ooh. vest open now. <laughs> Oh, right in the dick. I know it's a woman. <laughs> that is he, a he's even got the, like, a little, the, a little of a shirt open, too. I like this. He gets even more action-y as the oh. movie goes on. He's like Tarzan. He's just shirtless for the end of it. Yeah, his shirt just keeps ripping apart. In true, like, captain of the Enterprise fashion. Mm-hmm. It's amazing because Patrick Stewart is, what, 21 years old when this film movie <laughs> Have you seen? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty that you can find on the internet. Have you seen like pictures of him with like full head, full head of hair? Yeah, 
No. Is it just weird? I've never seen him with hair. The yeah. thing is, he let's, did. Let's, he started balding this, like yeah. in his like twenty, like noticeably balding in his twenties. So you really have some to people look. can just make that work, man, and he yeah. clearly can. His He's body got a good just dome a, for it. His yeah. body adapted. <laughs> the uh, the Borg Queen create introduction is the most was the most the most visually complex and expensive shot in the whole film. I think it took him like three months to finalize that. And sickening. The fuck? Okay. Why is young Patrick Stewart fucking James Bond? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I know. It, 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 just pass it to the fucking class, dude. I mean, the guy is the coolest motherfucker I've ever seen with hair. Holy He looks like a fuck. like World War II spy, doesn't he? Josh, the coolest look away. Dude. He's like an almost sexier version of Tom Hardy. He's fucking beast mode. I said, look away, Josh. Yeah, but it's Josh, only data. <laughs> Josh, okay, Josh that's also fine. Doesn't and listen. a disembodied voice. <laughs> that's the first picture that pops up. Actually, the first is like a closer version of it. Have uh, have any of you guys seen Captain EO, the Michael Jackson thing at, at Disney? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, what's her name? Oh, that's right. I guess it's not her time for her inter- introduction yet. Um... um the bad guy in Captain EO, played by um, Morticia Mort- Houston. Thank you. Yes, uh, oh, I was. I was like Morticia. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, is very reminiscent of the Borg Queen to me. And anyone who hasn't seen Captain EO should see it. I don't. I don't think you can see it at the park anymore, but you can find the video on YouTube. Those aren't tits. (laughs) Also, here's a phaser. (laughs) And a talking pig. You know, if Jordy still had his visor on, this would have been a lot easier. To prove there's blind people in the future? Yes. Sure. Yes. That's right. The bulk of this film is just one long night on the Enterprise. Mm. One crazy night. Crazy, 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 crazy nights. Some unmakeup air kiss for you. Ugh. Shut up, Jordy. <laughs> Put your visor back on. <laughs> and then I teach children how to read. <laughs> I still haven't seen any of the new Reading Rainbow. Neither have I. I helped Same find it's like it. The old one. I mean, at least it exists. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Is it on Netflix or? I think so. Yeah, I think it was on Netflix originally. You people. Oh, he said the thing. Suicide Squad. I think he's the first person (laughs) in all of Star Trek that says the thing. (laughs) What are we, some kind of Suicide Squad? Yeah, you'll notice that isn't in any trailer since. (laughs) I hope it's cut from the movie. (laughs) I hope it's the last line of the movie. If it's still in the movie. I'm going to groan audibly. Mm. I'll giggle. Ugh. I will sit far away from both of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's probably <laughs> in the movie. You're done <laughs> fucked up now. Clearly these Borg just want a hug. <clears throat> Wait, w- they, those uh, guys didn't learn they, yet? They can modulate. They modulate their... Oh, I know, but I thought it was like they were sending a memo out to the rest of them. Like, no, Yo. well, it's, it's new... 
They're rotating the frequency of their mm. of their phaser rifles. Hmm. Whoa. So okay. their right. their assimilation is just causing seizures. You got something on your face, bro. Oh, it's that. Okay, you're better. All better. These poor motherfuckers. Clear? Are we clear? That's the worst looking kind of bomb I've ever seen. We are not clear. Hey, who's up for laser tag? You guys are it. Oh, I wanted to see that game. (laughs) The Wii. Oh, he's Did he got not the... just say deflector and vital systems? The you'll figure you'll find out what they do. Yeah, but I mean yeah. th- those sounded pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> but in theory, not enough to stop. <clears throat> <laughs> Line. Uh, Line. Oh, uh, star. No, uh, space. Yeah, spaceship. Although I'm afraid to make fun of him too much because he'll punch me through the screen. Yep. Yeah. Australia. Okay. <laughs> He's just like. <laughs> Pointing stuff. Uh, yeah, geography uh, with Patrick Stewart. I just wanna, I want Jordy to, has books. I <laughs> want that video series. Yeah. Today we are talking about New Zealand, <laughs> New Guinea. <laughs> Did you catch everything? <laughs> no. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I'm jacked. <laughs> Is it your name? What's my name? <laughs> you don't know my name! Give me this. This, give me. Give me this. Thank you. Now I can turn the channels. (laughs) Oh, good. It was only set to kill. I know. Uh, They're phasers. Okay. We'll force this on her. Yeah, who do you think you are? Kirk? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Are you afraid of heights? Too bad. Get over here. <laughs> I'm from the past. Shit, I mean future. <laughs> I'm from my past, your future. These guys... This is where you should probably, maybe, if if this grosses you out. Originally, it was supposed to be like a, yep, mm. again, Josh. And yet you <laughs> continue to look. Yeah, again, doesn't listen, so. <laughs> the, uh, originally it was planned to be a master, like, control program. It's pretty good. like, Tron. For, uh. Yeah, again, it took, like, three, four months for him to. Make it look nice, but the uh, boop. looks really good, actually. No, all yeah. better. Yeah, <laughs> for like twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah twenty years. That looks really good. Year. But yeah, they they were like, we need to give him more something with a little more personality, as much personality as a Borg can muster. Not to mention, it gives kind of like data somebody more to play off of. Yeah. Exacting easier. I guess or no would have sufficed.
She kind of looks like Kerrigan from StarCraft. <laughs> yeah. Which one came first? Ooh, uh, this. I think StarCraft is like 98 or somewhere thereabouts. Probably got some inspiration from this. Yeah, and StarCraft has always kind of wore its like sci-fi influences on its sleeve, more or less. Mm-hmm, definitely. Aroused. face data <laughs> I'm gonna rip your head off when I get the chance you know Borg Queen was in Thor the Dark World and uh yeah she's like the lead doctor thing but she's also in uh, silent hill she gets yes. destroyed at the end of the movie she's the uh mother of uh the creepy girl Has she done any tv probably yeah <laughs> i'm looking through her imdb right now because she looks like someone from wayward pines i didn't see wayward pines damn Oh, she's in Bor- uh, the Star Trek The Experience, Borg Invasion 4D. She also Ooh. shows up in the series finale of Star Trek Voyager as the Borg Queen. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. hey. God damn it. Yeah. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. hold. On. There is precedence yeah. for actors coming back and playing two completely different characters. Thank you. What's Chris. his name? Vulcan guy from like Deep Space Nine or Voyager or whatever who was in like the Tim last Rock, movie. Yeah, Tim Ross. Yeah. But yes, confirmed right there. She plays the Borg Queen. Cool. I see the game of laser tag went well. Control yourself, woman. Long day at the office for Patrick Stewart. (laughs) (laughs) This bitch. And many a meme was born. <laughs> he does know how to please the ladies. He's played someone else in the series too, hasn't he? He plays Neelix in uh, Star Trek Voyager. Oh, she's in Tyrant, though. The Borg Queen. Cool. Alice Kriege. 
You a false creed. Yeah. <laughs> they always set whenever they have like audio set to this meme coming up, it's always set to Rammstein. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty metal scene. <laughs> Very Dick Tracy like. Right time period. Cue the Rammstein starting. No! <laughs> do! Do host! It's like the beginning of Temple of Doom. <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> oh, God. Cut, print, give that man a fucking Oscar. All we got is a legion of gifts. <laughs> uh, I'll settle that. for it. Cromwell was in at least one episode of Generations. Oh, next gen, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's I'm sorry, and Deep Space Nine and, as yeah, well. Yeah, that, that was the next picture. So, were they so embedded into the ship's systems that the hollow deck could he, kill them? He turns off the safety, pro- the safety stuff. So the hollow deck created real bullets. Yeah, I mean it's all hard light, so I guess it would be hard light that could fucking penetrate. Ow! It's also fiction. Yeah. I would have poked at it. It's that gif of... (laughs) (laughs) I really wish none of this stuff was in the movie. (laughs) None of the Earth stuff? No, it's just... This is like reverse uh, Superman for you. Yeah. That was Barclay back there, the one that he ran into. Charles Barclay? It's like you have to have (laughs) boring, pointless shit in a Star Trek movie. And they're like, well, we gotta throw this in here. Frake said he purposely placed this stuff to kind of break up the tension that was in... The Enterprise sequences. It's like, yes, let's break up the good stuff with bad stuff. Hey, you take the good, you take the bad. Yeah. So, uh, facts of life. Get rid of the visors, give them sunglasses. <laughs> Looking fly, Jordy LaForge. Is this a little bit better, Jake? Mm-hmm. Sunglasses? No. <laughs> I mean, it's better. But, uh... Of course, the guy that plays Reginald Barclay in the background was also... Uh, Howling Mad Murdoch on the A team. Howling Mad. Totally. Murdoch. <laughs> yeah. That's plenty of Murdoch right there. This is like if uh, Jake went back in time and met George Washington. Pretty much. Although he wouldn't shake my hand because he didn't shake hands. Mm. Smart man. At fist bump. He would Just like Carl Urban. Yeah. You don't, shake George, you don't shake George Washington's hand, damn it. Hello. <laughs> God, they named a high school after this drunk. Just take a picture with your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, he's got the precursor to smart glass, right? Yeah. Stop telling him this. Why are you telling him this? You're not giving any he's motivation. Got those, he's got those robot eyes, but they can't see that he's freaking him out. Yeah. Nor can he see All why kids super- love cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well All done, supervision, Chris. man. 
and he still needs to be supervised. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> I wish I could get some ice for this fictional character. <laughs> to help with his fictional burn. <laughs> no, the burn is real. <laughs> It was pretty funny, right, Jordy? Yeah, thanks, Jordy. <laughs> we all worked as a great team on that joke. Yeah. Hello. I bet that was in a trailer. Deal with it. That's, a, that's like that's the equivalent of like uh, seeing something we don't know and going bloop 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 bloop. Yeah, what the fucking Klingon is? Yeah, it been just it's just sunglasses just lowered onto his eyes right then. This means nothing to me. <laughs> In English, please. Thank you, Jean Luc. Ooh. Is that the tagline? Uh, it might have been. <laughs> Pretty much. To save the pu- future, they had to save the past. Down memory lane. Oh, the tagline was just resistance is futile. For the spacewalk scene, they actually wore weights to kind of make it look like they're moving in zero G, which basically the entire cast that was part of this scene complained. They're like, you know, you pay us to act. And they're like, no, got to make sure. (laughs) Put a little more method. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like 40 pounds weight, like in those suits. Damn. I wouldn't have been able to walk. (laughs) Oh, there is um, planet Earth, population 9 billion, none human. Right underneath resistance is futile on one of these posters. One of the proposed titles for the film was Star Trek Resurrection, but then they found out that the new Alien movie was subtitled Resurrection, and they were like, well, let's just change it. <laughs> What's the one after this title? Insurrection? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's no alien insurrection. No, but I guess they were like, we have this really great title. How can we alter it but still use it? Yeah, just change the prefix. Yep. I still don't know what an insurrection means. Uprising. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Ooh, this Mondo poster for First Contact is pretty sweet. I want to shoot. <laughs> this must be nice for Brent Spiner. It's like, cool, you don't have to make up my arms. Sweet. And then, like, one of his eyes. <laughs> yeah. So they're a crazed cult that sought perfection through infusing machine into themselves? Think about the Reapers. But yes, basically. 
I thought the Reapers were just people that went to the edge of space, saw nothing, and went insane. Yeah, that's oh, the oh, Reapers. Re- oh. <laughs> I think more Mass Effect. Okay. <laughs> Bitch slapped. I thought they wiped out <laughs> organic life to, like, keep a balance. Yeah, but okay. Uh, think, okay, let me ref- let think the, um, uh, the, the, the green ending in Mass Effect 3. The hybridization of machine and organics. Oh. How's he got blood? Maybe they injected them. I don't fucking know. Either way, it's theoretically the first time Data feels pain. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is what pain feels like. This I'll turn away from. <laughs> he doesn't do it, though. Yeah, he can't bring himself to do it. He does later, though, does he? Uh, he no, yeah. he gets melted away. Uh. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so to the one person in the room that hasn't seen the film. <laughs> yeah. No, Hopefully I, no one listening who I'll hasn't be all right. Seen. It's pretty metal. <laughs> Kiss him. Invade his personal space. Make him uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Day ta. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Don't encourage me. <laughs> Do we need to give you the room, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, resistance is futile. <laughs> uh, but the door is unlocked. And you mean negatrons? Shh. Just take a sciency word and put anti in front of it to make it sound <laughs> even more sciency. Doctor? Doctor? Doctor. Oh, it was on maximum setting. God damn it. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I have ruined the future. Yeah. I was the future man who stepped on the butterfly. You'd think in the future they'd have cooler looking spacesuits. That Borg heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Borg have cool looking spacesuits. They don't need any. Squats. I have to look as action ready as possible. In ten years, you'll be in an even shittier Star or Street Fighter film. But redeem yourself with a beard in Captain America. Oh, mustache, yeah, uh, yeah, mm, but a beautiful one. 
one good enough to be a beard. In five years, you'll be in one of the greatest HBO miniseries of all time. And Sex eventually, and you'll be in one of the worst seasons of Arrow ever. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> the Borg heard you say that. <laughs> 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 he seriously looks like he's trying to take a shit. <laughs> and Borg's coming to help. His eye looks like it was cut from a holographic card from a 90s X-Men comic. Or a pog. Oh, I keep going forever. So that's how they fly. Do you fly, Bobby? That's the second time I've said this this commentary. I apologize. Anything RoboCop's fine. Okay. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. I like how they just go back. It's like, oh, that guy wasn't a threat. Never mind. Yeah. We never actually liked 23605. 24601. Yeah. Think that was his number? Mm hmm. I don't know. I've only seen it on Broadway. Oh. <laughs> and my gun is useless. Change the frequency. <laughs> What's the frequency, Kenneth? Yeah, Kenneth Walker. <laughs> Throwback. Just like he threw back his gun. <laughs> How do they know what they're doing? Oh, like what Like what they're doing? Are I they... assume the Borg are just like, hey, he's fucking with something. <laughs> and like the longer they're there, the more beeps they hear, the more they're like, I should probably check this guy out. But they wouldn't be hearing the beeps. Would they? It's fiction. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Would there be beeps in Star Trek space? I mean... You're hearing all kinds of noise. For the audience. Who's to say the crew doesn't hear that? Mm. This isn't this isn't Serenity where everything's actually quiet in space. Or Firefly if you want to get technical. Or gravity. <laughs> yeah. Watch out now that you've said it, Neil deGrasse Tyson's gonna come on and talk about how inaccurate our show is. Mm. I will commit. <laughs> Jesus. Assim- assimilate him off screen. All better. Poor guy. <laughs> well, that was quick. Walking Picard. Ah. Leaping Picard. Fog Picard. That was cool. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sure. (laughs) I realized that there was like a big explosion at the end. Yeah, well, be careful what you wish for. Also, give me a simulated guy from Band of Brothers. (laughs) How'd they get him underneath his helmet? (laughs) Borg magic in space. 
<laughs> That's like the most like just slow punch. Simulate this. It's funny that you say that. It's funny that you say that. <laughs> She must have sensed a great disturbance. Yes, no! bitch. <laughs> Damn. How, how explosive was that dish thing they were making? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, it was filled with uh, antimatter. Uh, Anti-protron something or other. Fuck it, it came from DirecTV. <laughs> Let me guess. I'm going to be another high school statue. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Oh, I can't wait to see the dailies from this one. (laughs) Yeah. Where's the screen cap for that? Since so many awesome screen caps from this movie, that needs to be in there too. (laughs) We're coming up on one of my favorite line deliveries. (laughs) A couple of them. Getting puss. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Ayn Rand. God. Okay, because of the Alice Shrimp. It's trains. Choo choo, motherfucker. <laughs> Look at his shit-eating grin. <laughs> He's the director. I am directing the shit out of myself and loving it. To be it. fair, my understanding of his character, that's totally in yeah, line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself, son. I'm Jean Le Picard. I fire fully all the time. I'm feral every time. Feral? Feral? <laughs> Virile is probably where you were going, but who knows? He could be feral, too. (laughs) I don't know. That guy that climbed up looks more feral than anyone. No. Fuck you. We are at Enterprise E, damn it. We keep this up, we'll run out of the alphabet. Until you crash into a mountain. Instead, let's kiss. 
Instead, I'm so turned on right now. <laughs> How did he make the doors open? I'm going back to my models. He says as he's putting a weapon back together. Coming up on one of my favorites. <laughs> Have a whale of a good time. Uh, Patrick Stewart would later play Captain Ahab on a television film. Smash the model instead? There it is. <laughs> there's a... Now, where's the Jesus? For some reason, there's like a... South Park has Randy do that. And they, oh, yeah, that's They right, take yeah. the same audio clip. <laughs> <laughs> just a straight no. No, it's, yeah, it's just like Patrick, Patrick Stewart's no. <laughs> With the glass shatter and everything? Yeah, because he like destroys like a like a armoire or entertainment center or something. <laughs> It'd be funny if there was actually like no no glass destruction on the screen. And they're just like, did you guys hear glass shatter when you scream no? <laughs> Man, yelling at Robert Downey Jr. was so much easier than this. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any pictures of like my children that I can give him. <laughs> this guilt trip is so ineffective. <laughs> for me my f i think the favorite thing is like how awkward the like the glass shattering is like it's almost like a flimsy wrist like a <laughs> oh it's a mistake usually <laughs> Oh, I first... never actually read it. I just... <laughs> ah! <laughs> first mistake you made, quoting literature to a Picard. Call me Ishmael. This is your Cliff Notes with Patrick Stewart. I'd watch that show, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
can only assume they heard him screaming no from inside his ready room. <laughs> they should cut. They should cut that with him going no, and then should have the stormtroopers from uh, episode seven walking, be like, nope, turning around, <laughs> just to screw with all you sci-fi people. We've got one more memeable thing. He's lost the vest. <laughs> is the vest is that good or bad? <laughs> it's a bummer, but that's okay. We get a little more, little more Patrick Stewart. I keep on to say Wilson. Captain John Luke Picard of the USS Enterprise. Captain John Luke Picard of the USS Enterprise. Price. It's a whole You're the Man Now there's, dog there's song. A song, yeah. <laughs> Who? But not admitting my love for you. Now get off my bridge again. <laughs> now never show yourself on my ship ever again. You crumpled forehead bastard. <laughs> In the next gen movies, do they destroy the ship each movie? Because <laughs> that's what they've been doing so far, and I don't remember the latter two. I'll just spoil it and say it's the Enterprise E for the rest of the next gen run. Okay. Oh, I love to this put part. His, he forgot <laughs> to put his chewing gum on the back. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At this point, this song is nearing like or yeah. almost a century old. Yeah, Steppenwolf. Sure. I don't listen to any music that's a hundred years old. <laughs> I mean, sure, composed a hundred years ago, maybe, yeah. but even then, barely. Mm. Well, like you are right now. Not a fan of Copeland <laughs> <laughs> or Sousa. Yeah, pretty high up there pretty quickly. <laughs> I love how excited Riker looks. <laughs> Who was it that said earlier those phasers look like dildos? That was me. <laughs> well, I think this ship has beat the phaser. <laughs> if you got a three pronged dildo. <laughs> You're in for a good time? If you don't, I'll come back and kill you. (laughs) 
But all those other guys that have been assimilated, <laughs> fuck them. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll kill some of them with my own two hands so far. <laughs> I'd, I'd gladly do it again. <laughs> Shit, one I yelled in excitement as I did it. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't going to disrupt time at all. Nope. His shirt's getting lower. (laughs) The next time he leaves this room, Jake, he won't even be wearing one. Oh, thank God. Give it to me. I think, yeah, we're about to get, like, we're about to get sleeve- sleeveless Picard. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to have facial hair. Something's <laughs> not right. Am I in frame? It's the MCP. Like I said, it was originally supposed to be a control computer that they were com- like communicating with, but but no, they were like they need something with a little more, something a little extra, a little more oomph, a little more pizzazz, yeah. a little more tits. Yeah, none of those statements are inaccurate. <laughs> 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 How is his eye okay? It was punctured. 24th century technology? T, Earl Grey, hot? Fair enough. Marty, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally. Meet Two Face. Less makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Not having to wear a yellow contact in one of his eyes. You wanted a Borg with benefits. An ambassador? Hmm. Kind of how you made it sound like. Mm. Good, because resistance is futile. We've gone over this. Although, oddly enough, it does look like they <laughs> did put makeup on his little square of flesh that doesn't... Yeah, they probably added a border to make it look like there was a... Well, and, it, like, it looks very pink. Mm. <clears throat> like, like ham. Mm. I like that he has like <laughs> on that half of his face his hair is down. It's almost like 
It's almost like what they wanted to do with black suit uh, Spider-Man in the in Spider-Man Three. <laughs> we should have killed you in the last movie when we had the chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so glad I got him in, in to Ry- say that. In Riker's journal, he's like, "We all had a good laugh at that one." <laughs> Dear diary, wait for it. Wait for it. <clears throat> it's the greatest. I will say that I've enjoyed these guys' journey more since I said I didn't like it. Just that I have a gif of that. (laughs) Of just him. And look, we got Sleeveless Picard. Oh, yes. Sure is going pretty slow. Well, it hasn't turned on the warp engines yet. <laughs> Looks slow for critical velocity. You're a critical velocity. Ooh. Data, I said across her nose, not up it. What? Trailer moment. <coughs> God, man, is he so fucking <laughs> jacked or what? Right? <laughs> oh. yeah. Even she can't believe it. <laughs> and she's not even looking. <laughs> yeah. She's thinking about it. Ooh. <laughs> Damn. Well, he had to be jacked in order to do that. <laughs> this upcoming is another reason why i was confused of how she was in the season or did you say season or series finale well the uh, series well i mean they just kind of they reference that yeah they referenced that earlier, right? He was like, you were on the ship that we blew up, like, back in Next Generation. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I'm everywhere at once. As long as the, I'm everywhere the Collective is at once. Yeah. I wish Data looked like full-on robot all the time. <laughs> like, that just eats away it at is her, Tarzan. Bio, her specific biomaterial. At all. She chose poorly. Which eats away at her, too, apparently. It's definitely an inconvenience. Yeah, because, I mean, keep in mind, the Borg aren't completely synthetic. They're, it's a combination. They're cyborgs, yeah. not yeah. androids. But but she has enough of the robot part to um, maintain her consciousness. And then just for the ease of the audience, they had the same actress play her. Good thing we have those hyper vents. Look at that bicep. Christ. <laughs> that bicep is stronger than your entire body. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can probably let's, give do, him a, let's give him a little more credit than... It can probably that. do 15 push-ups. <laughs> probably. And those ones where you clap while you're doing it. Yeah, the one-handed push-ups. Ah, the cock show. push-ups. That bicep equals two quantum torpedoes. <laughs> but not three. No. <laughs> He that would just be, be ludicrous. <laughs> yeah. It was three. Everything he touched on the ship would explode. Even a world card break. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Mm. Terminator? I'm about to get a predator moment. So everything beyond that didn't Metal. kill her, but that did. Gotcha. Finishing blow. I like to see pickle jar, you know. Yeah. I like to see Kirk do that. I, that was always one of the stories that I always wanted to see. I wanted to see what the crew of the uh, original Enterprise would have done against the uh, against the Borg. I think that's been in comic book form. I'm sure, or video game. Like, there's yeah. so many. There's so much. That's not a particularly original idea, no. mind you. <laughs> Just like I want to know what the next gen crew did during the Dominion War, but I'm sure that's been done too. I don't know what that is. The Dominion War is the big war that basically the entire second half of Deep Space Nine is between the Federation and the Dominion. Yeah. Will that explain why I have no idea what it is? believe an Andrew can cry. Yeah. Don't believe a Patrick Stewart can be jacked. <laughs> Whoa. A novel by Shatner called The Return. Oh yeah. yeah. Has the Borg using uh, alien technology to bring Kirk back to life. I meant more so like at their prime, not so much. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. Like I, yeah. <laughs> I'm. I, I just did a search for Kirk versus Borg, and that popped up. Close Encounters esque the way it was first shown with the lights. Ooh, and apparently in that novel, uh, he posits that V'ger is supposedly part of the Borg. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> but this is where we. This is why the film is subtitled First Contact because it's technically mankind's first contact with alien life, which, well. I thought right. it would take this long to get to there. They needed to, uh, they, they, it's, they detected that humanity had developed warp drive. That's why they. Yeah, the the prime directive or whatever uh, it entails to not, you know, make any, yeah, any interference with a civilization that hasn't hit warp drive, essentially. So yet. we borrowed that from the Falcon. Apparently. What? So. We, oh, we, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's. I mean, in 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 a lot of science fiction, that's kind of like the unwritten rule of like civil or uh, um, uh, non-invasive aliens, pre-spacefaring. Yeah, yeah. You don't unless unless you're a dick and a, a, you know, and part of an alien invasion like in Independence Day, you don't mess with civilizations that haven't hit a certain level of technology. And yeah, a lot of I th- I, I want to say Star Trek was one of the first ones that like popularized that idea. But a lot of uh, science fiction takes from that. what you're thinking josh he presumably beamed everybody back aboard no but <laughs> how they didn't sense the 
Enterprise? It probably has superior cloaking technology. They, they've had the cloaking device ever since the end of Star Trek IV. They literally have a cloaking device in Star Trek IV. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as you ponder that. <laughs> I, to my knowledge, the only things I've ever seen cloaked before were the birds of prey. Yeah. And presumably, if they have the technology, the, the I don't, Enterprise yeah. could have it. It Like the Defiant has a cl- has a cloaking device. It no ship the, that small has a cloaking device. <laughs> it has the most advanced cloaking device in the fleet. That's the Defiant was actually developed to fight the Borg, but mm. it did it so so inadequately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear God. <laughs> he looks like the Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera. Mm. Oh, God, what a TV ending that, <laughs> that frame was. Also, presumably, they could just hide the ship on like the other side of the planet, because the the the, the Vulcans probably aren't looking for that. Man, he really, really likes the oldies. Maybe music in the twenty first century sucks in this timeline. Or yeah, maybe because of World War Three. No one's been making new music. Slash, maybe because they're stuck out in isolation there, all they have is access to that s- somehow still working jukebox. So, therefore, the only music they can listen to is that era. But yeah, that's... Uh, Star- he has a mini disc player. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what they develop. Anyway, th- that's Star Trek First Contact. <laughs> that's like the best of the next generation... Star Trek films. It's all downhill from here, gentlemen. Mm, I, I like not looking forward to that. I like how the first contact happens at the very end of the film. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, hey, it was Adam Scott. I mean, not that I didn't believe you, but now I see him in the credits. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. What'd you guys think revisiting it? I think it's better than any other Star Trek movie we've seen so far. That's for sure. Even. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, I mean, like it's it, it it's entertaining. And fun and cool, and he's got Jack Patrick. Got Jack Patrick Stewart. Jack Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Jack Trick Stewart. Jack Trick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just it was it was one. for me again. Uh, you know, just <laughs> hope the mic picked that up. <laughs> you know, for someone who's not a Star Trek guy, like it's the most entertaining one by far. Like I, I could watch this one again. Even the ones I enjoyed, the other ones I I really wouldn't want to watch again. But yeah, this one was this one was good. Felt like the most uh, next gen of the next gen movies. Like <clears throat> the one before this felt more like we're honoring the past and bringing in the next gen crew. The next one feels like what the fuck were we thinking? This one felt like a film version of the series it represents, and it still maintains my favorite. Yeah, it's it's fa- a fantastic film. So we'll be back with next week with maybe not as fantastic films. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Really selling it for you guys. But hey, you know, sometimes the commentary for a shitty movie is just as is more entertaining than a commentary for a good one. Mm. Except Waterworld. Nothing could save that. <laughs> you don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. But uh, Unless yeah. you listen to it. Did, <laughs> did you watch? Nah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this has been another Geek Out Commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. Live long and prosper. Bye. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a new commentary every Monday. We've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.